Hello everyone and welcome to our ATEG channel. Today we're going to talk about the evolution of solar technology. Along with wind power, solar photovoltaics is most widely used renewable energy. Its rapid growth is both reducing costs and driving the development of even more efficient technologies. The figures show interest in the world's largest powers, such as China and the United States, in solar energy production. Indeed, the number of solar production parks are constantly increasing after each year. Nevertheless, only 2% of the world's electricity comes from solar energy at the moment. And 90% of this electricity comes from Cristini Lea silicone-based solar panels, the dominant technology. Although abundant, silicon has drawbacks related to efficiency, manufacturing complexity, and pollution. However, scientists have revealed that a new type of solar cell would revolutionize the industry, known as perovskite. The massive adoption of solar energy is due to its many advantages, notably the cost. It is certainly important at the beginning, but there is no additional cost of maintenance, but also its simplicity of installation, allowing it to install in many surfaces. On the other hand, they do not produce any waste or noise pollution. Nevertheless, one of the big weak points of this energy is the low energy conservation rate. The average conservation of solar energy to electricity is 20-25%. In addition to this problem, there is a manufacturing pollution. Research by the American company Swift Solar has uncovered a new material that could revolutionize this industry, especially to answer the defects of the traditional protophylactic panels. Before detailing this discovery, it is a necessity to quickly recall the basic principles of the functioning of a solar panel. The solar panel works by releasing electrons from atoms thanks to the photons. Thus, the electric flow is created by the photocurrent. It takes several cells connected them together to form a solar panel. Each photovoltaic cell is in fact a sandwich composed of two slices of semiconductor material. Photovoltaic cells are generally made of silicone. In order to function, photovoltaic cells must establish an electric field. To do this, an electric field is produced when opposite charges are separated. To achieve this field, manufacturers drop the silicone with other materials, giving the wafer in the sandwich a positive or negative electrical charge. The upper and lower parts of the solar cell thus contain semiconductor materials with different electrical properties. All this creates an electric field at the junction between the silicone layers. This is one of the special features of this traditional design. There's a single junction of the electric field. There are two main categories of photovoltaic panels, those based on wafers, called first generation, and those filled with film cells. The most common solar panel, which represents 90% of the market, are those of the first generation. They are most often filled with silicone. Thin film cells are made by depositing thin layers of semiconductor films on a glass, plastic, or metal substrate, and use 10 to 1000 times less material than crystalline silicone cells. These thin film cells are lightweight and flexible, but their average efficiency is low. Thin film cells can be made by a Morbius silicone or more complex materials such as cadmium telluride. But scientists are looking for more efficient thin film solar technologies that can be used more widely. These materials are known as emerging thin films. Currently, perovskite are the leading candidates. Indeed, this new semiconductor material absorbs light very efficiently and also carries charges. It is therefore a very efficient material for solar cells. It belongs in the family of emerging thin films. As such, their particular structure makes them ideal for enabling efficient and low-cost photovoltaic systems. On the other hand, perovskite have intrinsic properties such as board absorption spectrum, fast charging separation, long carrier separation lifetime, etc. Perovskite solar cells are without a doubt the rising star in the field of photovoltaics. Indeed, thanks to their flexible light and highly efficient cells, they can open the way for a wide range of applications where traditional silicone cells are too heavy and gritty. The crystal structure of perovskite was first discovered as a naturally occurring material, calcium titanium oxide. But the perovskite used in solar cells do not need to be mined from the earth. A perovskite is a material used crystal structure meets the formula ABX3, where A and B were the two positively charged ions often of different sizes, and the X is the negatively charged ion. Scientists realized they could create a wide range of made mad perovskite crystals, following the same formula with a very useful property. So they used basic metals such as lead iodide or certain organic salts. Then they combined them to make inorganic, organic hybrid perovskites. They're formed at low temperatures. Silicone usually has to be crystallized at 1400 degrees Celsius. With perovskites, it can be formed in less than 100 degrees Celsius. This means that smaller equipment is more standard chemical process can be used. 
This makes it possible to form solar cells on materials such as plastic. That is, materials that be melted at high temperatures on which solar cells can be made. Therefore, we can make something really light and flexible. Perovskite thin films can be made by synthesizing a kind of solar ink and heating it generally until the perovskite crystallizes. Then can be a salt crystal that emerged from the evaporation of seawater. This thermal evaporation technique is not the only one used. You can also make perovskite cells by spinning coating, silk screening, electroplaning, or even printing the material on a sheet as thin as an inkjet printer. How efficient are perovskite cells? The magic of perovskite crystals lies in their custom ability. Single junction solar cells can only be absorbed a portion of the solar spectrum depending on the semiconductor material used. The lowest light energy that can be absorbed by a semiconductor is called a band gap. A semiconductor does not absorb photons with energies below the band gap, and the useful energy that can be extracted from a photon does not exceed the energy of a band gap. This means that much of the energy of the sunlight is lost when it reaches a single junction solar cell, but because the band gap of perovskite can be easily changed, it is possible to stack layers of perovskite on top of each other that are certainly turned to absorb different parts of the solar spectrum. This results in the solar cells that can be produced electricity from a wider range of light wavelengths, which improves the cell efficiency. So when you stack two solar cells on top of each other, it's called a tendum, or a multi-junction solar cell. So perovskite tendums convert more than the sun's energy into electricity, instead of wasting it on excessive heat. What exact efficiency percentages are we talking about here? Realistically, 30% is achievable, which is still a substantial jump from what we see on the market today. The nature of perovskites allows the manufacturing advantages as well. For example, less than 1% of the material a silicone cell is needed to absorb all the sunlight. In theory, this saves money as it is much cheaper to produce. Its main negative point is its lifespan, which is shorter than the traditional solar panel. Nevertheless, this new material could find an interesting use in many industries like cars, drones, solar watches, and the list goes on. The main problem before mass production is the stability. At the moment, we have not been able to verify its effectiveness under time under extreme weather conditions, such as heavy heat waves. Moreover, perovskite is known to be fragile and therefore requires protection from the environmental stresses. However, there is speculation that it will be commercialized soon. Solar photovoltaics is a fast-growing energy technology in the world today and is one of the leading candidates of the terawatt-scale carbon-free electricity generation in our lifetime. This novelty could revolutionize this sector in a big way, provided it delivers on all of its promises. That's it, we've reached the end of our video today. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a little blue thumb. To make sure you didn't miss our next topic, don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Thanks for sticking around until the end of the video, and we'll see you soon on ATEC.